Hey everybody, Dan here again with Adia Trance. I'm going to be doing another tutorial today on FM8. Um, we're going to be discussing a little bit uh, of the advanced side of FM8 today. So I'm going to briefly describe what frequency modulation synthesis is, why it's important to you, and uh, what kind of effect that's going to have on your uh, sound design within FM8 in the future. So, first of all, what is frequency modulation synthesis? Um, it's different than additive synthesis in the respect that it essentially modulates the pitch of a carrier signal. Rather than in additive synthesis, you are simply adding on harmonics to an existing um, audio path, essentially. So, the best way to describe how frequency modulation synthesis is somewhat different than additive synthesis is to show you. And so what I'm going to do here is essentially uh, play a little melody here, and then what I'm going to do is uh, modulate it using the effects portion of FM8. So what I need to do um, initially here is add in a different synth. And what I'm going to do is just put Massive in here. And we're going to create a very basic sound. And in fact, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is take this uh, melody that we've got. Uh, I'm going to copy it. And I'm just going to make this a pad so you'll be able to hear the differences when we're actually modulating it here. And once I create this, I need to add in the effects portion of FM8. And this allows me uh, to do something fairly cool, which is route the incoming signal as an effect out and then modulate it or put other effects and so forth on it. So now what we have here is what, exactly what we had in the first place. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is start modulating it. And what you're going to hear is the pitch change, um, which is essentially creating uh, a tremolo or vibrato effect. I can't remember which is which. I always get them confused. But it's going to create a pitch bent effect that you'll be able to notice quite readily. That, in a nutshell, is the difference between frequency modulation and additive synthesis. In additive synthesis, all it would do is put in a sine wave, it would mix it into this existing signal, and it would create an additional harmonic. With frequency modulation, it actually modulates the carrier signal over time. And this is an important concept when you're designing patches in FM8. Uh, one of the things that people like to do, and I'm going to go ahead and um, delete both of these here and get just FM8 back in. Uh, one of the things people like to do, I notice, is create a bunch of oscillators. And uh, they like to make them all like uh, saw waves here. And then what they do, uh, thinking that they're going to create a super saw type of a sound, is modulate all of uh, the operators by doing this kind of a deal here. Um, with sawtooth waves, this is not going to create the effect that you want. Now, why is that happening? Well, the easiest way is to look at the waveform here. Um, this spectrograph kind of shows us what's happening with our waveform. And you can notice here we've got all these partial harmonics going on on the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. This is how a sawtooth wave works. Um, essentially, this would be created with additive synthesis where you add 
all these uh, sine waves at partial harmonics going all the way up uh, to create this very uh, rich sounding timber. In frequency modulation, you're not simply adding these sawtooth waves together, you're actually modulating with them. And because a sawtooth has so many harmonics, it does not take very long at all to get a bunch of white noise in harmonic sound that is totally useless uh, in what you're building. And you can notice it starts to ramp up here. Watch the waveform. There's still a saw in there, but you're starting to see some grittiness, some white noise. And it's only going to increase the more we modulate this. You can see the white noise getting worse. And so on. Sometimes you can modulate a little bit with saw waves if you're careful. But for the most part, you're going to get terrible inharmonic noise when you do this method. See, if you're careful using this spectrum um, and the waveform graph, you can actually pick something that might sound decent. But why do it with saw waves when you can design it correctly using FM8? Generally speaking, a great way to design a patch using FM8 is to have one basic carrier waveform. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a sawtooth. From here, it's important to actually change these to something simple, like a sine wave, which has very few harmonics. It's very simple. And then what we can do is actually change uh, this to be different ratios, like, uh, you know, 1.5, 2, or 3. Um, essentially, 1.5 is halfway up an octave, 2 is one octave up, 3 is two octaves up above the fundamental. So what we have here is a much better way to modulate. You'll notice here how it's a smooth change to the waveform until, of course, we start getting really crazy um, and adding in a lot of, uh, of the waveform. But you can be much more careful with this. Notice the fine control we have with the sine wave. We can still create noise. We can create a tiny little bit of grittiness in the top end, but it doesn't completely destroy the entire waveform. Uh, this is a pretty good way, I feel, to use FM8 in design. There are some you know, other methods, like I could use E and F and mix them both in. Uh, the interesting thing here is that I can do a little bit of additional modulation and have more control over the sound. And it doesn't get too crazy. Now, of course, we're using very basic sounds here. You know, I'm not... I'm not trying to create um, a very solid sound by adding in, you know, some of these other, uh, adding in unison and increasing, you know, all these effects and chorus and all that. Um, I'm just trying to show kind of the basics here. Well, the somewhat more advanced basics, I guess, but it's hard to, sh hard to show when you add in all these additional things. So that's kind of a key thing in FM8. 
um, when you're doing your patch design is to think very carefully about the actual waveforms that you're using and how you're routing them and why. And the important thing is to understand how frequency modulation actually works and why it's going to get ridiculous when you just take a bunch of saw waves and add them together. Um, because it's not actually adding them together, it's modulating. Huge, huge, huge difference. And it's important that you realize that. So uh, the cool thing about FM8 is that you can then use the, F the effects to essentially create uh, all sorts of different kinds of, uh, uh, of effects and things like that. And so what I can do here is just uh, come in and make a basic sound. Uh, I botched something. I have no sound. Oh, okay. I know why. Because that's actually modifying the pitch, you can get a, a bunch of wide, interesting effects. And uh, the nice thing is that you can start doing that with white noise. Um, of course, the little effect that I've created here is just terrible. Um, but I'm trying to describe the actual principles here. So you can create some cool effects using this concept as well by using the, um, the combination of both FM8 and the effects. Of, the nice thing is that you can also modulate other synths uh, using just the effects. Um, you can't route the in, I believe, into other uh, of the operators here. It needs to go straight out, but it can be modulated by the rest of the operators. So there's a little bit uh, of an advanced discussion on FM8. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you understand it at a little bit more of an advanced level now and can use that intelligently in your future sound design. All right, we'll see you all later.